Brilliant. So when you're when you're ready, Steve, it's obviously been a quick turnaround uh, with last season's campaign domestically and you're back in domestic action again. And now we've got the Heineken Champions Cup as well. Um, but you're building a great squad at sale uh, with lots of depth in it. What are your feelings and ambitions going into the new season? Well, I, I think, that, you know, to re- readdress the end of last season with the COVID scenarios, we were really disappointed not to make the domestic playoffs um, we've had a short turnaround and I think the way that Europe has rescheduled the knockout stage is very good. It, it, it's player welfare, but also we can fit the games in uh, in, in the domestic season. Um, and, and we always work hard to qualify for Europe at sale and in, in times gone by, we've never really give it a crack, if I'm honest. I think in the history, we've only got past the knockout stages once and that would be possibly... 2006 or seven, or a long time ago. So, yeah, we, we'll get through London Irish this weekend on Sunday. Then we have a shorter turnaround. We play Toulon away. So, we, we, we'll be going um, tool handed. We, we'll be going with our best available team there, definitely. And then for Edinburgh the week after. Fantastic. Yeah. So, look, looking up to that uh, Toulon game, they're obviously Challenge Cup finalists last year. They won the Heineken Cup three times. They're a real European heavyweight. What are your expectations going into that one? Well, I think they will have their first choice players back from France through their arrangements with their clubs. And no doubt they'll, you know, I I think they've got a formidable team on their hands. I think they've got a better team than they've had for a long time. So um, for me, it it will be a job of going there and a a smash and grab affair. We've got to go in, defend very well and take our opportunities away from home and and, and if we create opportunities, make sure we uh, follow them through. Brilliant. And then, as you said, up afterwards, you've got Edinburgh. Um, they went well in the Pro 14 last year. Um, decent squad there. I think it's the first time Sale have met Edinburgh in a European competition. Again, what are you expecting from that challenge? Well, I think Richard Cockrell, the last three or four years, done a tremendous job there. Highly competitive um, in their domestic league. And, you know, with the, we played them in a friendly a couple of years ago and we're given a, a, a scene to up there. You know, the, the result was very close, but, uh, you know, a very uh, uh, abrasive team. And, you know, coming down to Manchester will we'll hold no fears for those people. Brilliant. And what, what about this new format as well? Obviously, it's slightly truncated. You've got uh, two opponents and four games in the pool stage this year. Do you think that uh, makes any difference to your approach going into the the new Heineken Champions Cup season? No, I, th- I think you've got to get it, to stand a chance of getting through it. I think you've got to win three games of the four, uh, and and that will be our intention. You know, where too too long away is difficult for anybody, but um, at home we're always uh, very uh, attritional, and we understand our stadium very well, and teams do struggle there. But that that we can't rest on our laurels, you know. So. We're, 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 if we could get a win away from home in France, that'd be a massive boost. And then we'd take the following week as it comes, really. Brilliant. And obviously, Steve, you've been involved at the at the club for a long time now. How much does it mean, uh, European rugby, to the club? And how much of a boost, especially this year, with everything what's gone on, would it be to the fans and everyone at the club for you to go on a, on a good run and go deep in the competition this year? Well, I think it would be great to get through the knockouts, to the knockout stages. I think Sale have done it once, as I say, in 25 years. So that'd be a real sort of mover for us. Um, I think for the supporter base who've not watched any live sport, you know, hopefully uh, the game against Edinburgh for us will be the first time we can have spectators in. So that's, every, I think everybody's going to be looking forward to that. Um, and, and just generally, our sponsors, our partners, the investors, everybody involved at the club, really. Get to, playing in the top competition in the world is club competition in the world is always a privilege. And, you know, we, we've got to make sure we can uh, stand on our own two feet in it. Yeah, you touched on it there, Steve, the idea of having fans slowly coming back to stadiums and obviously, hopefully in bigger numbers as uh, the season goes on. How big a boost for you all will that be? How much are you looking forward to seeing them back? Yeah, I think, I think it... it you know, we, 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 it's a very strange world we live in at the moment in, in all aspects of normal life, but certainly in sports stadium, you know, you, you, you go in there and and it has been a quite a leveller 
in a way fixtures if I'm honest with having no um, no no crowds because there's no influence on the referees there's no sort of booing and hissing and whistling certainly in France which does happen when you when the ball's being kicked so it's um, it, it'll be great to get uh, some atmosphere into the into the environments. Brilliant. And obviously, when the competition first started, the Heineken Champions Cup back in the mid nineties, you're in the middle of your playing career. But what were your first memories and impressions of of seeing this new European competition? Yeah, I thought I thought the just the cosmopolitan style of it. You know, um, forget playing on the field for a moment, but you know, you're taking sponsors to. France or to Italy or to Ireland or to Scotland or Wales for a weekend. And, you know, the days of the the amateur tours have gone in professional rugby for 25 years. And if there's anything that replicates that crack and that sort of togetherness is a, is a foreign trip. You know, you travel on the same plane, you stay generally in the same hotels and it does do a lot of team building. And I think that's been brilliant with the competition, if I'm honest. Since you've obviously been been coaching in the Heineken Champions Cup, what have you noticed? What's the difference, perhaps, for you preparing the side for a game in the Champions Cup compared to a game in in the Premiership? Well, I, I suppose uh, um, the, the the better coaches than me in the world would say that you don't need to do as much analysis. But you know, we get every game from around the world these days. I think I think it's just the playing styles. I think a big contributory factor is the crowds. You know, we can't kid ourselves. If you go to France, then generally, if the French team's doing reasonably well, they'll have uh, full crowds who who who, uh, who are who for the right reasons have one eye each. Um, uh, you, you, the refereeing interpretations, you know, uh, you, you you never get a ref who's from your domestic league, which is sometimes very good but also sometimes not so good. So the interpretation of that, as we all know, in the game itself, interpretation of of rules and laws is always difficult and players seem to have one and refs have another in certain areas. So there's all that to get to grips with. But, but in reality, you've got to be a good side to get into the Champions Cup. And it, it's the step before international you know, I think it's the, if you look at some of these past fixtures of semi-finals and finals, they're as good, if not better, than some of the international rugby you see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just one final one for you, Steve. Um, in your own words, or even in one word, what do you think it takes for a team to win the Heineken Champions Cup? What qualities and skills do you need to have? You've got to have high quality and high quality in my book is you've got to be resilient. You've got to have a squad depth, able to play your domestic and your European competitions. Um, I think that's it, really. I think I think if you qualify for the Anakin Cup, it, it, it shows that you've got a playing squad that's able to get there to continue through to the latter stages. There's a bit of luck involved, but I think a lot of experience as past winners. You know, Saracen's got to to be uh, bridesmaids a couple of times before they started winning it, and um, you know, various other clubs have done that. And you can we can count on one hand the teams that have won it more than once, can't we? Um, whether it will be Leinster, whether it be Saris or the French team. So it, 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 